Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube, where they don't include the audio ads, although YouTube may provide their own ads on their platform. Alternatively, you can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. To those of you who are already supporting us, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Your contributions make it possible for us to continue doing what we love. And as a final note, I did want to mention one last thing. If you are paying for a service, let's say like Audible, and you're listening to this show on that site, they do not provide any financial or monetary means to this podcast. We provide it to them as a way for you to be able to listen, but they don't help us in any way. So again, thank you to everybody who's already supporting. And those of you who want to support us in the future, I deeply appreciate it. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is April 28th, 1947. And the title is the 15th call. Hope you enjoy. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering who beats the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let go, big toe! I am Silver! Nine-year-old Bob and Betty Barton were twins. 
They stood near the split rail corral on their father's ranch with worried expressions on their well-tanned faces. The horses in the corral represented a varied assortment of old and young, tame, half-broken. A number of these were scrubs, but the twins loved them. Bob, do you think Dad will sell all of them? Gosh, Betty, I don't know. He's talking mighty serious about them. Maybe he and the foreman aren't talking about selling them at all. They're talking about it all day. How do you know? Because I heard Dad telling Mom just a little while ago that he's going to meet McKee out here at the corral and tell him what horses to sell. I wonder if he'll sell Blackie. I bet he won't. Oh, I hope not. Betty, let's see if we can get over close enough to hear what Dad and McKee are saying. Come on. All right. Fifteen, huh? Well, that means we need three more. Let's see you pick them. Oh, now, let's see. Oh, God, McKay, it's hard to pick them. I wouldn't do it if I didn't need the cash. It's too bad it has to be Childress instead of some man that knows how to treat a horse. Mm, I suppose I should consider myself lucky to find someone that's willing to take the scrubs. Those critters have needed Cullen for a long time. You'd have those scrubs on your hands for a long time if Childress could buy a horse flesh anywhere else. He's tried him. Sure he's tried. Other ranchers won't deal with him. Well, I'll deal with him. I've got to. Well, you've got to pick three more. Uh, what about that bay? Well, he's a bad riding horse. Short winded. Mark him down. It makes 13. Yeah. Need two more. Yeah. Getting hard to pick him. How about that oversized paint? He's mean. He's a good-looking horse. Good-looking, yeah. He's poison. One of these days, he's going to turn killer. You better get rid of him, boss. He's a dangerous one to have around. Especially with a couple of nine-year-olds that like horses as much as your youngsters do. All right, McKay, mark down the paint. We need one more, don't we? Yeah. One more. But, boss, I... Yeah? What is it, man? Uh, why don't you tell Chiris he can only have 14 horses? He wants 15. But we don't have 15 to sell at his price. He's paying for cows. He's not buying first-class horse flesh. Mac, you know, Blaine, well, there's one more horse in that corral that you ought to get rid of. Now, I don't know any such thing. You do. What about Blackie? Well, I... Blackie I get... should go with those others. All right, maybe he should. And again, maybe he shouldn't. You know what store your youngster said on that horse? He's the pet. Sentiment can't enter into horse team. Well, it does, and you don't blame well it does, boss. You didn't feel the same as I do. You'd have picked Blackie and the first five horses to go. Well, I... You've been hoping you could make up to 15 without taking Blackie. Isn't that it? <laughs> yeah. I reckon you're right, man. I can't do it. Blackie's got to go with the others. You really mean that, boss? Put him down. That makes 15. Cut him out first thing in the morning. Uh, all right, boss. You say so? No. No, Dad. Hey, what's this? Yes. Dad, you can't sell Blackie. Well, you can't let Blackie go. Where did you two come from? We're right over there, Dad. We've been hoping you wouldn't get rid of Blackie. You can't. You can't do it. Oh, Blackie's our friend. The children will beat him. You must treat him terrible. Oh, please, Dad. Do what Max said. Tell Mr. Childress he can't have 15 horses. Now, just a minute, both of you. Listen to me. If I promised you two I wouldn't sell Blackie, I wouldn't do it. You've never known me to go back on a promise, have you? No, of course not. You? No. All right. I made a promise to Mr. Childress. I promised him 15 horses. But Blackie's always been our horse. He's the one that taught Bob and me how to ride. You kids are young. Too young to have a horse of your own. You just wait a couple of years and I'll get you a first class saddle horse. One for each of you. But we want Blackie. No, you don't. Blackie's old and stove in. He is not. I'm scared. I didn't mean to say it that way. But I mean, we like Blackie. I'm sorry, kids, but it's got to be the way I say it. Ah, let me see how brave you two can be. Uh, come with me, Mac. Uh, got some instructions for you. All right, boss. Come over to the front, boss. 
Don't cry, Betty. Please don't cry. But Blackie's going. You just wait. Blackie's our friend, and he's not going to get a horse with by Zeke Childress. Not if I can help it. What do you mean, Bob? Maybe they think they're going to sell Blackie, but they're not. If they take him to Zeke Childress, I'm going to get him back. It was the next day when the top hand, McKay, returned to Barton's ranch after delivering the culled horses. Oh, 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 oh. He reined up at the ranch house to report to his boss. Easy, boy. Hi there, Max. Come on into the house. I got back fast enough, did you, boss? Yeah, you need a good time. Come on inside. Yeah. I expect you got the horses to children's all right. Yep. Any trouble? No. No trouble. I uh, sure hated to see Blackie go. Poor kids, I feel sorry for him. So do I, McKay. But it can't be helped. Here's the money. The children's paid up in cash according to the agreement. You better count it, boss. You counted it, didn't you? Sure. Jim, have you seen anything of... Oh, sorry, Jim. It's all right, Martha. McKay just got back from delivering the horses. I don't suppose you saw anything of the children around the crowd, did you, Matt? The kids? No, ma'am. Dear, I wonder where they've gone. I've been looking everywhere for them. You didn't see them, did you, Jim? Mm, no, I just came in from the saddle ship. They weren't out there. Where can they be? I'm worried. I reckon they'll come in when they get hungry. If that don't fetch them, the storm will. It's going to rain in a little while. But they've never been away this long. Jim, you don't suppose something could have happened to them, do you? What could happen to them, honey? Sakes alive, you can't expect them to stay under your nose all the time. If they don't show up in an hour or so, I'll go looking for them. Ah, uh, how about the cash, man? Right, boss. We'll go over it and make sure Childress didn't hold out. The Barton twins were farther from home than either of their parents realized. Goaded by their affection for the old horse called Blackie, it made their way to the Childress ranch. Meanwhile, the sky had grown dark as thunderheads rolled up with rumbled warnings of a coming storm. There's Blackie. See him through the bushes there. Bob, I'm scared. Oh. If, if we take Blackie, it'll be stealing. Big children can send it to jail. You won't get the chance. Bob, let's go back home. Please. I'm tired and I'm so awful hungry. And besides, it's going to rain. Black, you'll be more tired and hungry if we don't rescue him. But look at him over there. Doesn't he look sad and lonesome? Yes, he does. You've got to help me. But how can I help, Bob? What should I do? See that rock there? Yes. You can stand on top of it and watch out for Mr. Children while I climb the fence. We've got to hurry or we'll get wet. Two horsemen had been riding toward the children's ranch. One was an Indian, and the other wore a mask over his face. They were the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. They reined up near a dense growth of bushes to study the sky and wind. Right up, Kimosabe. Oh, oh, scout, look at that. Look at that. Look at those clouds, Tonto. Ah, them thunderhead. Plenty dark. Plenty one who wants a lot of rain. The wind is in the right direction. The storm's going to hit in a little while, Toto. That's right. When it comes, it's going to hit hard. That's a storm that's been building up for a long time. Many people need water. They'll get it. Maybe too much of it. What do you think? Well, Indian and family expect flood water. You see plenty Indian move into hills. Perhaps we'd better get into the hills ourselves. We need some shelter. Well, their ranch over yonder... Maybe we get shelter there. Oh, no, not there, Toto. That's the Childress Ranch. What's the matter with Childress Ranch? I've heard a lot about Zeke Childress. He doesn't know how to treat his horses. Oh. I don't want anything to do with the man. Easy. Toto, did you hear that? Ah, that plenty big thunderbolt. You're talking about the thunder. I thought I heard someone shouting. It sounded like a child. Let me hear that. Muscle and ox cow. Hey, 
young scamp. I'll Let me deal go. with you just as I deal with Tank Tank Let with horses. Go, children. I'll use this whip on you Please? until you've had a lesson you'll never forget. You <laughs> let my brother go, Zeke Children. Don't you dare hit him again. Eat back or I'll give you a taste of this whip. No, uh, no. Please, please, Mr. Children. I'll teach you. Please. I'll help you, Bob. Uh, you little wild cat. There. Kick me, will you? I don't think I'm just my arm. You've got more than that coming. I don't know that. Who's going to hold it? Watch it, Let it go. Bob. Let them go, children. Look. There. You want to mix me? You can have the whip too. Here. Bob. Bob. Lashed him in the face. Try to cross that man. Phyllis, you need this. Oh, golly. That's the way to deal with him. Hit him again, mister. Hit him again. Take the whip away from him. Use the whip on him like he did on us. You've got a lot more coming, Phyllis. Here's another. No. I shut the beginning. Why, you. No, now that's enough. Don't hit me again. Get up. Oh, golly, mister. You sure pummeled him to a fairly well. It serves him right for treating horses as he does. Who are you, son? I'm Bob Barton, and this is my twin sister, Betty. Oh. Where do you live? Dead ranch is over that way. Well, what are you doing here? We came here, well, because the vet is... Well, I'll tell dead. you why they're here, mister. I'll tell you why they needed the licking I was giving them. Well... Those two young scamps are playing downright horse thieves. Horse thieves? Yes. I'm going to have the law on them. Caught them right in the act of stealing one of my horses. Bob... I won't believe what Sylvia says about you, but I don't think you and your sister are worth it. Well, that's it. Mr. Childress is right. We're just what he said we are. And Bob Barton, you can't deny it. We're a horse season. And I reckon we deserve any punishment we get. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. After Betty had said that she and her brother were horse thieves, the Lone Ranger and Tonto took the Barton twins and Zeke Childress into the Childress saddle shed, where they heard the story of old Blackie. While the storm broke in all its fury, the masked man listened to the story of a gentle old horse that was greatly beloved by the twins. We didn't mean to steal anything. That is, I guess we were going to steal it. But we didn't stop to think. We didn't stop to think. Just a minute, Julius. Like he means much more to these children than he does to you. Ah, uh, Tommy Rod. Yes. Royalty is something you wouldn't understand. Let them have the horse. I'll go home with them and explain the situation to their father. I'm sure I can make him understand it so he'll return the money you paid him for Blackie. Bob, well, did you hear that? Dolly, do you really mean that? What do you say, Childress? Why should I? I'll tell you one reason why you should. It's about time you did one decent thing. There's another reason. You deserve a lot more punishment than I gave you. I'm ready to continue where we left off. Are you? Well, you don't give me much choice. No, Childress, I don't give you much choice. Take the horse. Betty, Betty, did you hear that? We're going to have Blackie. We're going to have our horse back. Oh, mister. Oh, mister, you're awful good. Lean down here. I'm going to hug you as tight as I can. <clears throat> there. 
Well, that's a pretty funny report, Dad. Well, stop the foolishness. If you're going to take the horse, take it and get out. You're going to stay here until the rain stops. Are you going to go home with us, mister? Yes, Bob. Bob and I'll go with you. You and Betty can ride Blackie. Rain stops. Plenty quick. We'll start as soon as we can, Toto. It's going to be dark before we reach the Barton Ranch. After the storm had spent the worst of its fury, a steady rain continued into the darkness. By that time, Martha Barton was almost beside herself with worry for the twins. She paced the floor of the house, waiting for Jim and the foreman to return from their search. Then she could stand it no longer. Betty! Betty, where are you? Leaving the door wide open, the frenzied mother dashed into the night. We've got to find them. Bob! Betty! The night was black as pitch. Martha didn't know where she was going. She didn't care. Bob! Betty! Oh! Stumbling over a protruding root, she fell, struck her head against the trunk of a large tree, and lay motionless. Martha! Martha! I see her, boy. She's hurt. Yeah. Martha, honey, what's happened? Hold that lantern close, my dear. Oh, boss, she's hurt. She's hit her head. Martha, speak to me, honey. Oh, Mag, this looks bad. Yeah. Better get her to the house, boss. If you would take the lantern, I'll carry her. No, no, I can carry her. You just go ahead and hold the lantern. Wait a minute. Uh, is she breathing? Yeah. I hear a horse coming. Daddy, it's there. There. There, here we are. The twins, thank goodness, they're back. They're not alone. There's three horses there. There, look who's here. We've got that Blackie. Bob. Bob, look. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. You, you twins. Who's that with you? Of course, one of them's masked. Anything, Philip? What's happened here? Mommy. Oh, Bob. Mommy's been hurt. Take a look, Philip. Now, hold on, you mister. Know. Just who are you? What's that mask? And who's the Indian? Save your questions until later. Where have you kids been? How'd you get that horse? Oh, Dad, we, we, went, we went over to Mr. Childress' place and... Mr. Childress caught us, and he was going to lick us when the masked man came. And the masked man helped us. You've been gone all day because you went to get your horse back? Yes. Just a minute, Martin. What? How is she, Tonto? Hurt. Plenty back. That's what I thought. Is there a doctor in town? Yeah. Doc Hathaway. He's the only one. Better go get him right away. This woman's badly in need of expert attention. Well, Mommy. Die. I'll get going right away, boss. Take my horse, Mac. Right. Meanwhile, we'll get this woman into the house. If she dies, it... It's because of that doggone worthless no count horse. Let's discuss that later. Follow me, Tonto, and lead the horses. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We'll need Dr. Plenty Band. Mommy! Mommy! Facing the floor won't help, Barton. That horse. That doggone horse. He's responsible for this. If anything happens to Martha, it's that horse who'll be to blame. Martha. Martha, speak to me. Can't you speak to me? Not yet, Barton. You, Bob, uh, Betty, I... But, Dad, we didn't know. Oh, I don't blame you, kids. That horse up there. You hadn't gone to get back that stolen old critter... Father wouldn't have gone out looking for you. Don't say any more right now, Barton. Perhaps you're to blame for selling the horse. What's that? Like he means a lot to Bob and Betty. You mind your own affairs, Mr. Mac. Boss, I'm sorry. Where's the doctor? I couldn't make it, boss. What? The bridge is down. The river's a raging flood. I, I couldn't get across. You mean you couldn't get to town? You couldn't get the doctor? That's right. We're completely cut off from town. Well, we've got to have the doctor. Martha will die. No, I know. I did my best, boss. There's no horse alive can cross that river tonight. Oh, but Blackie can do it. Blackie. Blackie, here. Mention that horse again and I'll shoot him without waiting for daybreak. Barton, I'm going to have a try at that river. You? Come with me, Toto. Bob, they're going to borrow your horse, Blackie. You mean what are you talking about? No horse can cross that river. And even if you were lucky enough to get across, you couldn't get the dock back. You'll have to take a spare horse for the doctor. That's why I want to borrow Blackie. He can do it, mister. Honest, he can. Let me go with you. You stay here, Bob. Tonto will go with me. Uh-uh. Be ready. 
Yes, Toto. Him not strong horse. We'll take him along, then leave him on this side of the river. Well, why do that? Blackie's got to justify the love of those children. Get in there, Silver. Did you leave Blackie? Uh, I'm in here. I'm steady. Big fella. Oh, Silver, come up to scout. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, hey, hold on, hold on. By the Lone Ranger and Toto, who let Blackie reach the bank of the river... They found it even worse than they had anticipated. White water churned madly in the darkness. Tonto thought the task ahead impossible. You're going to stay on this side, Tonto. I'm going ahead on Silver and lead Scout. Got to have him to bring the doctor back. Well, maybe doctor not come. He's got to come. You stay him. Tonto, try it. Hit the ground, Tonto. Oh, me not like it. I'm sorry, Kimosabi. Come on there, Scout. You're going with Silver and me. Take a look at that water, Silver. That's where we're going. All right, come on, Silver. Silver immediately struck water over his depth. He struggled bravely, holding his head high, while the masked man, holding firm to Scout's bridle, shouted words of courage. Come on, Silver. Come on, boy. You can make it. You've done this trick before, and you'll do it now. She's getting fear all the time. What could the doc do if he did get here? The masked man said he'd have medicines that would help her. Ah, that's the use of things like that. The streams, what you said, no man or horse could cross it. It's all I said and more. Black, you will know how much depends on him. Don't you mention that horse again, you hear me? Yes. Black, there must be something we can do. Uh, I wish I knew what to suggest, boss. You can't just stand here. You can't just wait and do nothing. You know, there was something about that mess, man. What do you mean? The way he acted. The way he talked. He seemed so old, fine, sure of himself. You think he could cross that stream? I don't know. No, even if he could. Even if he got to town, he couldn't get back with the doctor. He seemed to think he could. You know, I've been thinking about him, boss, and wondering. <laughs> Doc! Doc Hathaway! How'd you get here? Don't ask me how I got here, pardon? All I know is a masked man come to my house and said I was crossing the river on horseback. Oh, doctor, doctor. Do something for Mommy. You can help her, can't you, doctor? You've got to help her. Open my bag, Barton, while I have a look at the wound. An Indian looked at it, Doc. He said that I you... I know. He told me about it. Doc, did you really cross the river on horseback? If it hadn't been for that masked man and the extra horse he brought for me to ride, I'd never been able to make it. Now, Barton, Martha will be careful watching and a lot of attention. And she'll have to be kept quiet. And you you think there's a chance? Yes, yeah, she'll live. Oh, Doc. Thank goodness. Now, I'm going to stay right here for a day or so to make sure that she's out of danger before I leave. Doc, you, you can have anything I've got for crossing that river on a night like this. You're, like indebt was... you're indebted to the mask man who came to get me and the horse that defied the river. Doctor, was it my horse? Was it Blackie? Well, it was too dark to see the horse's color, Bob. The masked man told me I could call the horse Blackie. Dad, Dad, did you hear that? Blackie crossed the river. Uh, uh, I guess I made a mistake, sir. Blackie's a part of the family. I never should have sold him in the first place. Oh, Betty. We're here, Mom. We're right here. And Mommy, Blackie's here, too. And he's going to stay with us. Good. And everything is all right. Faces that everything's all right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's too bad Scout not get credit for helping you, Silver. But it's it not matter. <laughs> I guess Scout wouldn't mind 
Helping a poor old horse like Blackie establish a reputation. Huh? Easy, easy, big fellow. Hold the line, I'm upset now. I'm still there. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.